tabletop review didn't feel appropriate for this one, so I'm heading out somewhere so that we can talk about the Bushcraft necklace. We'll see you out there. All right, this feels way more appropriate for the Bushcraft necklace. So let me get settled down here somewhere and we'll talk specs. Bushcraft. This is our Bushcraft necklace made from round leather cord, a ferrocerium toggle, and a ceramic striker. On the back here, we've got what we call the double fisherman's knot, and I guess that's not what we call it, that's just what the knot is. Uh, this allows it to be adjustable, so you can grab the two knots, you can pull them apart as you wear it over time, they get a little more snug, but what you can do is grab a single one. There's one of these two that will tighten the knot and one that will slide through, and it's gonna be opposite on either side of the necklace. So that's the slider there on the other side. It'll slide that way. So even if it gets jammed up over time and you can't move both of them at the same time, just by pulling, that's your fallback is uh, just kind of grab one and move one at a time. So if those ever come undone for any reason, uh, just look them up online. Again, it's called the Double Fisherman's. Down at this end, we've got our fire steel toggle. It's made out of ferrocerium. And the cool thing with these that don't get a lot of attention is actually all the small details on them. So because it's a toggle and we don't want it to rub on you, uh, be abrasive or rub against the, the leather and wear it out, we put these little chamfers on all the corners. And I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but even inside the holes, we chamfer those as well so that it's not gonna cut and wear through the uh, leather. Now that is something that is unique to Wazoo and we are the only people doing that. So if you think you're gonna get a, a cheap necklace somewhere else or a, a different product, go buy your own fire steel toggles. I recommend doing your research first because you don't wanna put all the time and effort into a necklace that's just gonna end up wearing out from cutting through the cord. The last part here, we have our ceramic striker and we tie it on with an alpine butterfly knot. So it's kind of a neat little symmetrical knot the other thing to notice about it is that it has a slight contour to it when we tie it. So that's intended to be worn against the body on that side so that the crisscross X is showing on the front and that way it'll lay nice and flush against you when you're wearing it. If you wear it the other way, you'll notice some people might do this on accident, but you'll see it sticks out. So that's a good indicator of whether or not you're, you've got it on right side up. So function of this necklace is to be a wearable not only decorative, but functional fire starter. So we started with the white ceramics. We also have black ceramics available, and we're gonna be expanding into different pendant designs as well. But the way that you would use this is you take the toggle, you slide it down as far as you'd like, and then you can just kind of grab the, the slack of the necklace there. And what I usually do is pinch it around my finger. That gives it a good solid bite that you have a surface to strike now. The other option that I've seen people do is pinch both ends like this and then kind of push forward on the toggle and that'll give you a more directional approach that you can get down closer to your tinder. So really whatever's more comfortable for you, we definitely want you to practice with these. So get them off, wear them, use them, strike them, get comfortable with it because this might be your lifeline someday. It's not intended to be your only fire starter, but if you're out there and this is the only one you have, at least you've got it with you, you better know how to use it. Uh, the last thing to note here is the front and back we talked about already. And the way that you can do this to keep it nice and decorative still is strike just the back of the fire steel. Now save the front in case you need it in an emergency or anything like that, but when you're practicing, just strike the back side of it. And then when you wear it, it won't be obviously visible. It'll still look nice and clean on the front. So that's gonna be our next step here. We'll talk about striking. So if we flip this over, like I said, I wanna use the back of it. So I'm gonna take the fire steel toggle away and I'm gonna flip it to the back side. So I'm working just with the back side. The striker, you can hold again, however is comfortable, but try and get a nice purchase on it. You can help, you can pinch the knot if that gives you a better grip. I usually come up further and I find that these side angles work best for me, but some people prefer the, the flat front there. So either way, you would line it up, get a, a little bit past 90. So 90 is not gonna do much for you. You want a little past, uh, maybe even like a, a 60. And you're trying to bite into that material. 
because what you're doing here is you're using the white striker to actually scrape metal off of this ferro rod. So when they're new, they have this black coating on them. Your initial spark or strike isn't going to do anything because you're just removing that coating. Once you get through the coating, then you'll, you'll be able to produce those sparks. So the first one here, you probably won't see anything because I'm getting that coating off. And now you see how there's that, that exposed strip. So that's our ferrocerium material. If I don't get exactly lined up on it again, I might get another dud. But as soon as I get that scraped off, you should start to see some, some sparks. So we've got that. And we can just sit here and make sparks. So that's how you use the necklace. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little piece of tinder out of my belt. You could essentially process any sort of wood if you're good at making feather sticks or you got some good natural cedar bark or something nearby. Again, front of it still looks nice and pretty. You can see some black soot marks on the ceramic, but those typically wipe off. And if not, it just adds a little character. So let me pull out some tinder. I'll be right back. For those of you not familiar, this is our cash belt. And if you know where everything is in your cash belt, you can reach in and get it. These are fire plugs from uh, Production Hanger or Fire Starter Specialists. They keep changing their name, so I'm not sure what to call them. Um, but all you gotta do with this, I'm just gonna take a little end of it and kind of bend it back and forth as I'm pulling. And it'll give me a nice little fuzzy end. And we really like these things because you can kind of make candles out of them. So if I just fluff up this top end here, I'm gonna go ahead, set that, set that down. Now that I squished it. <clears throat> and trick here. So again, using the backside, doing the same technique. I'm coming over, and the one thing that I want to try and change when trying to ignite a small piece of tinder is that instead of pushing forward, I want to try and pull this back as much as possible because in pushing, you're likely to overshoot and knock your tinder or your, your pile over. So it's easier to try and do either small controlled little flicks where you're not, you're not having that follow through or pull the other side. So I think I'm more of a, a controlled flick guy, so we'll see how that goes. Shooting all over the place here. There we have it. So there's one more thing I wanted to mention here, and that's some of the, the actual physical properties of the ceramic. So when you compare it to something like a steel, steel is malleable, it's flexible, it's bendable. Uh, ceramic is not. It's extremely hard and it's brittle. So what that means on the edge retention is that out here on the very corner where the molecules are coming together at that super sharp level, a knife blade where those come together as you use it will kind of dull or bend or warp and that's what makes you have a dull blade. Since these are not flexible, not malleable, what's going to happen is it's only going to either build up gunk on the edge of it that can be cleaned off or worst case scenario, if you manage to smash it with a rock or something, it'll break. So there's not really much in between for ceramic. It either breaks or it, you know, scrapes whatever's in front of it and doesn't dull. So that's a unique property here. What that means for us is that your striker is never gonna dull, it's never gonna wear out, so you can keep using it over and over again. And it also means that because it's harder than steel, it doubles as a knife sharpener as well. So if you've ever seen the trick where people sharpen a knife either on the edge of a car window or the bottom of a coffee mug, it's the same concept. Those extremely hard ceramics and silicas you can use to deburr blades. So if you got a real bad burr on here or you're really, really dull and you need to remove a lot of material all at once, this can do that. You have a sharp edge, so just like any other sharpener, you want to try and position the angle to match what's on the blade and then you run it along and we're doing just a, a slight angle there just like we were scraping a ferro rod because we're trying to scrape off that metal. So you'll feel if there's any burrs or any uh, big imperfections on the blade. So a lot of times I'll start with this to give it a rough sharp and then I'll go back with the Viking 
to really hone it in and get a nice clean edge on it. So that's something that makes this uh, product not just a fire starter. These ceramics aren't just a single point scraper. They now become multiple use tools that you can wear on you at all times. So that's kind of what we specialize in is making everything multi-purpose and it's a really unique feature to our necklaces and our products in general. So even though it just looks like a fire starter and that's what we typically advertise it for, that doesn't mean it's the only thing it can be used for. So this concludes our video here of the Bushcraft necklace. And if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you. We'll see you in the next video.